This podcast features adult content not suitable for listeners under the age of 18. You have been warned. Welcome to this episode of Back to the Story, where friends come together to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'll be your DM, Klaus. Let's get started. If there's anybody in our friends group that you can tell, you can tell me. I don't think the stars would shine so bright if just one of you were not here. My name is Ezekiel de Barbarang, at your service. You have my sword. You're the only person who makes me want to be better than I am. And my axe. I wasn't strong enough or fast enough or, I don't know, clever enough. I, I, I didn't have it in me to stop what happened. We haven't done this before. Does that make us professional? I will make you amateurs at best. And if those do not help, their people survive, they're cut from the pack. You wake up from this daydream, from this nightmare. Half memory, half dream. There's more out there to find, and there's more moments for having. I'll find a way to be stronger next time. I don't know fuck all about what's right. Everyone who has ever loved you was wrong. You can do better. I know. I have to. (laughs) How do you want to do this? We'll go ahead and get started. And Bukhaji can jump in and then jump soon. And hopefully that's soon. Because of reasons. Yes, we know we're about to die. Alright. So... Previously, after some discussion about anger and forgiveness, the group inquired at Rothburn Rook to build funds for your trip across the Sea of Orn. The group learned of contracts meeting a new companion, Ezekiel, along the way, and the group investigated contracts on murderers and thieves before settling on a less clandestine foe, the Valoran who had been plaguing the outside of the Northern Gates for some time now. You've made your way nearly a day outside of town, north. Um, and have settled along a spot near the cliffs along a uh, no longer traveled road, uh, set up camp, and are prepared to face an expected ambush. This is where we pick up. Night has fallen not too long ago, maybe half an hour ago, as you all set up camp and are settled around a fire. What would you like to do? So, um, I think we might want to make a decision before anything happens about what we do if the Volgrith shows up. Run? That's my vote. Any objections to running? Well, we could try to kill it. Wouldn't that solve the problem? No, because then one of us becomes the Volgrith, right? No, we just have to have to eat it soon. It's hard, right? And that's like a werewolf that works. in those stories. What stories? Are the werewolf in Paris. It's a. It's never mind. It's a book I read. How sure are you about your information? Uh, I got my notes from uh, the tower from Lun Hollow. I uh, say it sounded pretty solid. It's theory, but I think I don't know. Um, would I have any knowledge about this? Or something similar? Uh, let's see, you can make a... There's a couple options. You could make either a religion, arcana, or a history check, depending on how you're looking at it. Equally terrible at all of those things, so let's try religion. How's that? I can't see the thing. Uh, it sounds nope. like a cult to consume hearts. And you're not sure beyond that. It sounds like a culty thing to do. Sounds like bullshit to me, but... Hey, Daddy, um, uh, we know that this is a curse, so, uh, is it, is it possible that a removed curse could actually work? Can we just hold and can I ask, are we calling the DM Daddy now? I was gonna say, can we I don't know if I can do that. I don't, I don't... It's a, a very different else. word um, to my people. So, yeah. <laughs> you're, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know you had kids, George. That just... 
I was unaware that George had kids. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Uh, that's not what I meant. But anyway, moving on. Uh, I so Does then, Calvin have that ability to do that with a spell or any other power? Uh, I don't. I don't have a clue. Uh, I really haven't looked at spells at all, so I don't know what level is remove curse. Uh, it's like thirty. Hell no. Okay. I don't have that power. But uh, uh, you can, do, do I know? I mean, it, you, can, but, you kind okay. of you kind of know some things about curses from the unhallowed, being that it depends on the curse. Some are easier to break than others. Okay. Well then, try it. And if it's level three, I don't think anybody has curses. that. So. All right, I just I, I'm just trying to flesh out my knowledge. So, thank you, Daddy. Curiosity: Does anybody know how this Vulgarith creature turns things into the Vulgarin, or whatever they call them? I'm a little confused. No, no idea. Uh, can but I, we can I make a history check on that? Sure. That's a dirty 20. Okay. Um, you've heard where Calvin got more of the academic nature of curses and mutations. You got more of flamboyant stories, so you're not sure how much was exaggeration and how much is factual. Um, but you have heard uh, stories of this, partially from Hugo, about uh, consuming blood, corrupted or mutated regular animals like wolves or even people into these corrupted beings. Um, so it seems to be by consumption of blood. The Valkyrie's okay. blood, specifically. Yeah, I, I will should... forward that to the party. So I should not bite them. I would advise against it. Yeah, okay. try to avoid doing that. Stick to, like, claws and weapons and things. That limits me somewhat, but I am willing to do what I can. <laughs> we wouldn't ask you to do any more. Kind of nudge Ellery and go, do you bite often? No comment. Only when the situation calls for it. So, I would just like to point one thing out that I noticed about this bounty okay, and the one others. Thing. Thank you, Calvin. That's so, right. so, I noticed that the reward for the, the Volgrith is the same amount as the reward for Blue-Eyed Charlie, which should tell you something about how dangerous he probably is. That is a fair point. Well, so, no baden. I don't know, you've all thought these things before. Anything I should be aware of? Um, keep an eye out for hawks. The Valrin tend to be accompanied by hawks with glowing green eyes. I think the Valrin can take our multiple well, beasts. They're not, like, the wolves are not the only Valrin. True, but that's what the bounty, the bounty was focused on, the wolf-like ones. But just keep in mind that they uh, tend to come paired. That's fine. I can handle a few beasts in the air if I need to. Okay, uh, just a uh, I mean, I'm not good at math, but how much gold are we getting per wolf, Lauren? Uh, 25, I think. And how much gold do we need total? We already figured out we have to kill at least 12 or 13. To make sure 12 we or 13. Money. We don't need And that each wolf many. is accompanied by a birdie. So, technically, multiply that by two is how many we have to kill. The, the way I see it, if, if I did my math correctly, I think if we don't want to dip into any of the money we already have in order to pay the fare for the ship, then we would need about ten. If we do change. want to use some of the money that we already have, then we don't need as many. So what are we collecting? The horns? Do the flying ones not have horns? I haven't had very much hands-on experience with the uh, hawks. We can take the heads, too. Well, perhaps the hawks will count. I don't recall when I looked at it talking about the full-legged ones. 
unless they have a different name. No, yeah, but they're the ones that tend to have the horns, so. Well, you're the ones with the experience, I'm just along for the ride. Uh, the point that I wanted to make about the hawks, though, was that in the times that I've seen the Valren, the hawks were visible first. So they might be our sign that the four-legged ones are coming. Well, as I recall, we're going to keep the fire going. Maybe draw them in. Perhaps we should take watch in pairs. Uh, Ezekiel, how's your night vision? Pretty good, actually. Uh, I was just going to ask if everybody thinks that we need a little bit more light. We have the fire, and I am capable of running a little bit more, just about torchlight, so... Callan nodded, nodded, nods sagely. Well, the reason why I ask is because I can make a lantern. Calvin uh, looks at you thoughtfully and says, That sounds. Mm hmm. I mean, we could try and draw them out while we're all awake, play some music. Calvin look, looks at Ezekiel and is like, Mm hmm. <laughs> would you like to lead us in a rousing team? Uh, yeah, sure. I believe I could do that. Uh, while he's doing that, can I find a tree or something to climb to get a bit of an vantage point? Yeah, you'll actually set up uh, close by uh, to a tree, so yeah, you can certainly climb up it. Yeah, to I'll hop up there so I can... I'll keep my eyes up high. I don't really know what these creatures look like, but I'll keep an eye out for the hawks. Okay, give me a perception check. It is a... I'm going to three. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, looking around uh, from the treetop there, you can see a little bit better. You can see north and south down the road is fairly like there, a few trees here and there. You can see kind of to the west, there's a hundred-ish, eighty to a hundred foot drop towards where the beach is. Um, and then further west towards the forest, there's kind of a sloping ground um, before it raises up a bit, maybe 10 feet up, um, and then kind of raises into a forest cliff. Um, looking around, listening out, you hear the crickets, you hear birds every now and then. Uh, you don't see any movement there. Not yet. Okay. And is it actually dark out yet? Yeah, at this point, it's probably an hour past um, okay. Just yeah, nightfall. And uh, it's actually a particularly dark night because there's no moon out. Uh, there's some cloud cover and there's no moon, so it's particularly dark out. Uh, um, and just one more thing while I'm up there. Uh, I will cast light on a coin, but then stick it in my pocket. So I, all I have to do is just like pull it out. Yeah, you got it. Uh, and then uh, since it's a particularly dark night, I am going to rip off one of my patches and conjure a bullseye lantern. It is full, it is lit, and sheds bright light in a 60-foot cone, and dim light for an additional 60 feet. Okay. Yeah. And this particular patch has almost a ring uh, woven into it, and you kind of hold that, and as you lift it up, it kind of unfolds, kind of like accordion style, dropping into this lantern. Now that you can kind of point and actually light up specific areas as you need to. That's so cool. Alright, we have a little bit of extra light, so if I'm able to point it at one, then we should be able to see it quite clearly. Do we want to keep that unlit until we need it, not waste any of the oil? Probably do that. I think so. I'll extinguish it then, and then have it sitting next to me or hanging off my backpack or something like that. Just Easy access. Yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. So are you all kind of staying up, just waiting, watching? Yeah, it's been a little while. Um, so as you are all kind of out there by the fire, is he, are you still in the tree, or do you come down after you look? No, I'll stay up there. Okay. Yeah, just hanging out, sitting in the tree. Um, another hour or so goes by, um, as you're all just kind of sitting, waiting, watching. Uh, everyone go ahead and give me a perception check. Dirty twenty. Six. Nine. Eight. 
I was almost a 19 and then it rolled back and I was like what happens so yeah as you're sitting around the fire keeping watch um, some of your it's bright at the fire so it's harder to look through the shadows just your eyes adjusting um, but Ellery you notice this first you kind of hear the sound of leaves rustling branches moving um, and as you kind of squint looking off in that direction you see leaves and branches moving, almost like wind is rushing through it. There's always a wind inside the room, but this wind seems particularly strong, almost spinning. Um, and as you watch this wind, you see blackness, like a dark cloud rising up slowly above the tree line, with flakes of green orbs glowing within it as it swirls up. Um, I point this out to the rest of the group immediately. As soon as you begin to raise your hand to point at everyone, you can all clearly really see this. It's just a black swirling of blackness with green little glowing dots inside. I'm going to light the bullseye lantern again. As it raises up, it begins to shift. As you go for the lantern and uncover it and begin to turn towards it, the black cloud begins to float towards you, hover towards you. And as you raise the lantern, and pointing on you, you suddenly see you just <laughs> the blackness isn't smoke or mist. It is numerous wings and feathers just uh, swarming and swirling rapidly in almost a tornado of various birds. You see the orbs are actually their eyes as they're rapidly just spinning around and they are slowly coming over the tree line and down towards you all. Sacred and everyone's got a roll. Okay. Finished it. Everyone should know my initiative bonus is minus one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yikes. A oh, ball is two. Great. There are oh. more slow people. Uh, whose deck score is higher? Ezekiel or I guess Calvin, right? Yeah, I got something in the deck. Okay. So as the swirling mass rises above and you see just the swirling of various Crows, sparrows, owls, just various animals uh, or birds swirling and begins to come towards you. Ellery, uh, you're the first to notice this. And which direction is it from us? It is sort of northwest from where you are. And I'll ping the general area. It's hard okay. to see, but you can, it, there's sort of an outline against the sky. Okay. Um, so first thing is I'm going to move a little bit away from the campfire. Um. And then I'm just going to fling a firebolt in the direction of this cloud of birds. Okay. So you can't go flames, throwing it in that direction. It sears across the sky. Uh, Thirteen? As the flames in that direction, you see it's going towards like the top center of it. And you see the birds just suddenly part like waves as the flames through it. And they come back together swirling still. Is that your turn? Um, yes, that's it. That will bring us up to Vesper. I see. Okay, so for my action, I'm going to uh, try and Sacred Flame them. So, I don't know what kind of deck save they're going to have. Uh, a natural 17. Well, let me just make sure. Can't imagine. Oh, yeah. Less oh, than yeah. a negative 4, yeah, they, so. Yeah, as the, the flames uh, strike towards them, they again, they part as well and just flying around. You maybe hit one or two here or there, but nothing can bring you this massive uh, swarm. Okay, and then bonus action, I'm going to spiritual weapon next to them. Um, uh, but this time I'm going to make like a giant, like, imagine like a giant mace kind of a thing, something bludgeoning that I can just hit a bunch of them with. I'll try and attack them with that. Oh, that's a natural 20. That'll do it. Alright, so that's going to be 2d8 then. And because of the bullseye lantern, you can actually see them well enough to not have disadvantage on the attacks, since it is dark out. Yes. Um, so that is a 10 force damage. Alright, so the spiritual mace conjures up in front of them as it swings. It's several of these birds that fly uh, slamming into the ground here and there. It's still a pretty massive store, uh, swarm that's almost enveloping the mace at this point. And that's my turn. All right, so at that point, that is going to bring us up to... So as you're kind of looking in this direction, looking towards the swarm, you see something, you hear something, and you see something jumping, leaping off of the cliff, 
hitting the slope and kind of sliding down the rough rocks as you see a Valorant jumping out. And it's just going to run towards the biggest creature, which would be bold. That doesn't hit. <laughs> that is a 19 to hit. I think that's going to hit. And it wants to fill me in on what's missing out on. Yeah, so you all then. The, the new art it gave me was like the. I think I have that by now, and that should just be make my AC 19, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that should just hit. Uh, so you all been camping out around a campfire, waiting for an ambush of Valorant so you can collect them and turn them in for gold. Um, and suddenly a swarm of birds um, has breached the tree line, and then this one Valorant has leaped off the cliff and has charged straight toward you, slamming into you um, with its horns. Dealing. Or actually, before you do, maybe instead, um, might, that might be a good time. Um, maybe you see, uh, yeah, maybe balls, like, just at the last second as balls, you know, maybe trying to parry it with a sword. And it looks like he's not going to, and you just see kind of like a, just, it looks like a glimmer of light, and it doesn't hit. Okay. So, again, as it leaps off the cliff and runs down the slope towards you, it goes to slam its horns into you and pierce uh, through into your stomach area, jumping up. You try to parry it, but it's too quick. But as it comes close, it just hard, like it's hitting the side of the shield, and this just light uh, briefly shines bright as it re recoils, falling back. And we'll go for its second attack. Use a natural 20. Which... Um, I, I know that this isn't exactly... I don't, I don't know if this would totally work, um, but technically he's within five feet of me. Could I impose uh, protection on him? My kill? Uh, yeah, I'll say you can. Um, so I, as, I just mean I know he's a big guy. That's why I ask. Because yeah, yeah. As it, the other you see the Valorant's horns just pushed back against this light, um, and as it comes back again with a bite, snapping towards one of his legs, Calvin, you just whip around, placing the shield in between uh, the Valorant and Ball, and it has disadvantage. Yeah. So instead, yeah, 17. So at this point, it latches onto the bottom part of the shield, and you just kind of push it back off, unable to get to ball. And that will bring us to Amson. Um, do I have control over the bullseye lantern? Uh, not yet. That will give me control, though. Thank you. Yeah. I'll say using that is going to require some sort of action. It depends on how what you're doing with it. Okay. That might just be a fun section. So what I want to do... Is 5, 10, 15, 20, kind of like that. And then I want to move the lantern over here and then just angle it. And it's currently angled to the left. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, we'll say with just that, it's just your bonus action to angle it that way. Okay. Um, and then I am going to use my action on the to cast fairy fire on the swarm. Okay. That's a deck save, correct? Uh yes. Oh not great. That is a natural four, so yeah they don't make it yes. as the what color glitter? Purple. Purple uh rain showers down. And now suddenly there's the green lights of their eyes swirling, and a purple light is lands upon their backs and feathers, swirling into this purple and green tornado. And is that your turn? Move bonus action, yeah. All right, that will bring us up to the swarm. So the swarm is going to begin to fly down. All right, so it should just be able to get right there. And as it does, it is going to ball as uh, these, the swarm begins to swirl and head towards you. Part of you is covered by them. You suddenly feel them bashing against you. You feel their feathers rustling against you and pecking at you or attempting to. Uh, so that is a 21 to hit. Um, it would not hit because I still have. And... All of you see as these birds begin to try to peck at ball, you see bright light just kind of bursting every time they try to get too close to them, pecking towards some sort of invisible light shield. And as they do this ball, 
you notice like that side of you, you can't see through the swarm. Uh, you can't see to the other side. What is a swarm of birds? It's a swarm of various birds of dark feathers with green eyes mixed in with uh, purple glitter from Amson's Fairy Fire. And that will actually bring us to you all. Okay. Um, I'm just going to try to swing into the darkness of these. Actually, uh, I'm going to um, use my, my breath, which is specifically called my ring weapon, and I'm just going to try to use that to just shoot some fire into this swarm of um, birds that I'm having a hard time seeing. Okay, so as you do so, uh, they were with six deck save. Alright, so that would be nine fire damage. I don't think I can angle it in a way to hit anyone else, so... That's it. Yeah, you just did some, though. As you uh, let out a giant roar, flames roar out towards them, um, you see several birds glittering uh, that fall down at your feet. Their the eyes, the goat roll green eyes, uh, go out. Yeah, did you want to stay there? Yeah, I can't move into this one, can I? Uh, you can, actually. You can oc- occupy their, their space. Uh, you can't see through the other side. The swarm is just that thick, even now. Okay. Um, you can walk in if you'd like. No, I think I'll, I'll, think I'll stay here. I'll end my turn here. Okay. That will bring us up to here. And sprinting up towards you, Amson, leaping off the cliff once more, and then running down the angled slope, um, tumbling rocks and pebbles down the way. It runs towards you, and it's just able to get to you, but it hasn't. It's sort of mid, mid-air, lunging towards you, Amson, but it hasn't gotten to you yet. And that will bring us over here. As Ellery, another one jumps off the cliff, running down the slope running straight towards you, isn't able to quite get to you, and that'll bring us up to you, Calvin. So, Calvin, you're standing uh, kind of next to Ball. There's a swarm, and you saw the Valorum, but before the swarm came, it's now blocking your vision to the other side. Um, you can only see part of Ball at this point. What would you like to do? Can I... Um, I would like to get to right here, if that's possible. Uh, move to right there. Yeah, and you can actually, you can go around or you can cut through the swarm, whichever way you prefer. I'd probably go through the swarm. I don't think I could cut across. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, I, this space is the quickest okay. way I could get to so just would be cut through Ezekiel and go through the swarm. As you cut through the, the swarm, um, because of how many birds there are, it's, you're essentially blind to anything but them. And as you're running through, they begin to try to peck at you. And they, they kind of peck at you, and they, they nick you here and there, and a little bit of blood trickles, but you get to the other side. What would you like to do? Uh, can I uh, hit the swarm? Yeah. Can I try to... Uh, and that's an advantage because they're currently glowing purple, so you, you can see them really well, even uh, in this night. Cool. I will smack them. I will try to smack them. Let's see how this works. That's not great. That's a 15. Uh, oh, that's that's even better. That's a 25. Yeah, you definitely hit. Okay, can I... Um, shoot, let's just let's just roll regular damage. Are you using the spear? Thing. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that is 9 piercing damage. Okay. You strike forth, skewering several of them, knocking a few out of the air. Um, you do notice that this swarm, just with how quickly they're moving, it's very difficult to get a good solid uh, hit um, with this sort of weapon. But you do take a few out. Um, do I do? Is it known that there would like being with inside of them is that disadvantage? Is like that you said I was blinded. Was there any other? But I have any intuition to whether or not if I kept ball in there, it would be. So what, I'm, what, I'm, what I can do is potentially, uh, I'm not positive on this, but uh, as a bonus action, I can make a shove with my shield if I can move them five feet. Is that... Um, because of their swarm nature, you might be able to move some of them, um, but not the entire swarm, just because it's not one single creature that sort of acts as one. Cool. Yeah, that's what you're asking. Yeah, I, uh, I, about the I other thing, as you're running through it, you're not blind, it's just you can't see out of it. 
So if you were to right. attack something outside of it while you're inside, you wouldn't be able to see them, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's moot if I can't move it, though, so. All right. I'm, I'm good, then. Okay, you come to the other side and strike in a few. Oh. Yes. I do, I do, as my bonus action, I forgot that this was a bonus action spell. I would like to cast Shield of Faith on uh, Hampson. Okay, what does that look like? I kind of, in a like an offensive gesture, uh, after I, I swing my spear at the the swarm, I kind of uh, turn back to Amson and kind of like almost hold it, try to like you know like mom arm it, you know I try to put my mom arm in front of him, try to try and get between him and the the Valorant, and uh, and kind of like almost like a like a light mumbling under my breath, and uh, like an energy flows out from me through the spear and onto him. A light like glowing, if you will. Yeah. But as you do that, Anson, uh, you feel slightly more protected by Calvin and his faith. And that will bring us up to this. As a, yet another one, Valorant leaps off the cliff, rolling and running uh, down the slope, uh, getting next to Ellery and Vesper. That's all I can do. And that brings us up to Ezekiel. Okay. I was technically currently in the tree. Yeah, I'm going to climb down. Okay. And it's not it's not super high. You can just almost come off ten feet down, landing on your feet. Yeah. And then so I can't really see ball from here? Uh not really, no. Um uh, then I guess Yeah, I should be able to see. So I will uh once I'm down on the ground, uh cast bless. At second level, on myself, Calvin, Vesper, and Ellery. Um, and then since I don't want to bite them, and that's apparently what all animals do, I'm just going to uh, pull out my staff and cast Shillinui. Just be staff and shield it. So okay. I've got a and- like, kind of oaken short staff, and when I cast it, a flower blooms on the edge. Um, and it kind of just faintly glows with green light. Okay. And and just uh, so you're aware, if you have a shape that you want to use that doesn't, by the manual, have like a claw attack, but it's reasonable that they would, you could try it. Oh, yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Just for future reference. But yeah, you, you do have the bloom pops up and a little bit of light uh, streams from it. Anything else for you? No. That's action bonus action. So I'm just going to squat there. All right. And what does the blessing look like on you, Vesper, Calvin, and do that? They'll see me kind of reach down into my armor and grab at something, uh, just kind of hum, and I'll actually channel it through my staff, kind of wave it over my head. Um, the three of us, there's just almost a brief wind through your hair, but nothing else. Okay. And as that wind picks up, Ellery, you feel invigorated, uh, but I have two Valren on either side of you. What would you like to do? The second Valren certainly complicated things. So, first things first, I am going to use two sorcery points to cast Mage Armor as a bonus action, because I forgot to do that while we were waiting. Okay, see so you. Use this power channeling through you. I thought you had done it while we were traveling. Doesn't it last for eight hours? It does last for eight hours. Did you do it during the travel? Did I do it while we were traveling? Maybe I'm crazy, but I thought you had you had said that because we're usually pretty on it. We can we can say you did. Uh, That sounds reasonable, and you probably would have at some point. So that's fine. You already have major armor. You use the spell slot on it. Um, and you currently have it. What would you like to do now that two Valor and are kind of right in your face? Okay. So in that case, I'm still going to use the, the sorcery points, but in this case, I'm going to... Okay, so I know if I use the sorcery points to cast Shock and Grasp as a bonus action, can I also cast it again as an action? Uh, does it let you change it? Uh, I think unless the uh, it changes something, it would still be limited by the spells. Uh, there, it's a cantrip, so she okay. wouldn't be able to do it twice. Okay, so yeah, if, if it's a normally an action and you're converting one to a bonus action, yeah. Okay, so 
I'm going to do that, and I'm going to, with <laughs> both hands, one on either Revolver and cast Shocking Grasp. One is an action, one is a bonus action. Okay. Good work. Don't forget, plus a d4. That is very helpful. Potentially. So one of those is a 14, and the other one is 21. They both hit. Okay. So as you just quickly, almost uh, drawing out the same lightning bolt and then splitting it um, at the same time, those uh, to the left and right. So one is for three points of lightning damage, and the other is for six. Okay. And the lightning rushes over them, coursing through their muscles, locking them up. Um, you can see matted fur in some places, and some places where the fur is just falling out, and you see dark brownish black uh, skin beneath. And then I am going to move up. And as you try to move, they try to lunge towards you, but they're just locked in place. All right, so I'm moved up next to Ezekiel. Sorry, Vesper. Just leave me alone. It's all good. Okay, and I believe that's all for you? That's it. Okay, that brings us up to Vesper. As you see these animals locked in place by the coursing lightning energy, and they're starting to loosen. Yep, so bonus action, I'm going to start scooting my spiritual weapon over. Um, How bad does the one in front of me look? Uh, They both look fine. They may have been more scarred before this. Going to use... um... I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds at second level on the one in front of me. Okay. Oh, god damn it. Okay, no I'm not, because that's a natural one. Okay. Let's <laughs> see. So, as you conjure up this, uh, what is this spell called? I'm not sure if you use this one um, before. I don't know that I have. I think it's this, I imagine maybe like the, the dark stains on my fingers. Um, It's almost like lifting off of those, like this like dark necrotic energy. So it's like... It's kind of like the thicker smoke that usually blows off of me, but it's like almost dripping as it comes off of my fingers. Okay, and as and as this energy almost liquefies from from the smoke, um, and being able to pull almost uh, the current wounds of it and try to stretch these out, as you cast it forth and try to reach them, um, is just when the electricity kind of jolts and they shift suddenly to the side, the shoulder kind of snapping. As it goes over, and there is now a pocket of grass and bush that just withers immediately. Okay. Yeah, well, that's my turn, because otherwise they're just going to keep me alive anyways, so. Okay. Well, then, do they, oh, uh, what? can they make a reaction, or, or can they still no, not make a reaction? They're, from? they're still locked by, they're Great, still seeming to be so <laughs> 15. I'm going to skip up there. <laughs> okay, so taking your chance to get out of dodge. And as you do so, that is going to bring us up to this one. It's going to just shift around just a bit and is going to take another strike towards the ball. Another natural 20. So I'm going to look these. 10 piercing damage towards you, ball, as it lunges forth towards you, slamming into you. Second attack is a 24 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. Um, and then as that hits, this time he slams the horns into you, um, can't quite lift you up, but pushes you back just enough as it then turns and takes its uh, claws. And this paw of what used to be a wolf um, is now larger, massive, the claws longer. Um, it slashes across you, dealing five slashing damage. The claw push across, raking into some of the cracks between your armor. And that will bring us up to Anderson. Okay. I'm going to start off by using my bonus action to inspire Vesper. And I'm going to give a very old one that I haven't used yet. Um, when I feel your spells, tears run down my face, cause I Probably he wounded, and when I feel strong, I can think about how we'll beat these goons as I sing my tunes as I know with you and your spells we can win the fight. 
And Vesper, as you hear this through the <laughs> fluttering of the swarm, uh, you feel confident that you can see this through. Uh, what else we you answer? Uh, for my action, I'm going to viciously mock the Valren next to me. And uh, this Valren, as you're kind of singing this out, is kind of mid-trampling, leaping towards you. Uh, that was a wisdom save, correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, Eleven. No. And so I say, you deserve a kick in the nuts. <laughs> okay. So as it says this, you see a flicker of the green eyes, um, and you see like whatever wolf it was once before, and you sense maybe it's been kicked in the nuts before, then it just feels hurt before it comes back into its monstrous form. Uh, so it takes two psychic damage. All right. And now that it uh, is... Uh, now that it has disadvantage on its next attack, I'm going to move just over here. Okay, so you do that quickly turn, and it finishes the lead. Natural 18 to 17, actually, still. Mm, that hits. That's after a lot of players, then. Um, so it, as you turn and run, bites towards you. 10 uh, piercing damage. As you turn and run, it uh, strikes out towards you, catches you in the half, in the calf, almost pulls you back. Um, you're able to pull, uh, kind of push through, tearing some of those muscles and get away. And that's my turn. All right, and that will bring us up to this horrific swarm, which is going to begin to swirl away and try to envelop. Do this so you can can actually see both Calvin and Ezekiel as they're just swirling around. Um, and it's going to go for Calvin. Or actually, let me roll for it. Uh, Ezekiel. So Ezekiel, as the swarm swirls around you, begins pecking into you. 18 to hit. Can I. Can, uh, can I. Do my, you said, are, are, is he, can I see at least, at least see him? I'm sorry, I know I'm staring really bad. I'm not super awesome right now. Uh, can I see, uh, is he ill at all? Or am I just like only blinded, completely blind? Um, I'll say you're effectively blinded mechanically, but you can see him enough to do this. Okay, okay. then I would like to impose this advantage on them. Oh, okay. And I think I'll have to read up on it, but I think you have to say it before the attack, but no worries on this one. So that is. 17 to hit. I can't remember what I said the first time. 18, I think. Okay, so it, uh, 17 this time. As you put up your shield, you just feel just this like, like putting your hand out of a moving window in a car going 70 miles per hour. You just feel these things hitting against the shield, and you might knock off a few of them. But for you, you take six piercing damage as you just okay. feel them. Pecking into you from all over. I make a con check for bless. Add a d4. 18, so I'm. Yeah, so the wind remains swirling around you, Ellery, Vesper, and Calvin. And that will bring us up to you, Ball. So the swarm. And Ball, you would technically get an attack of. No guy hasn't left your reach. I apologize. Ball, you're up. Alright, um, I'm going to swing into this, uh, like the swarm of birds. Okay. Um, and with the advantage because of the uh, fairy fire. But you can't, as it's moved, you can no longer really see Calvin or Ezekiel. Um, they're just covered in birds. You can hear maybe them, but you can't really tell where they are. Okay, um, so I'll try to, more, like, maybe just be a bit more careful with my swing and make sure I don't hit them when I do this. Okay. Um, is a natural 20 hit? Yes, it does. All right. Um, so, how beat up does this little, uh, does this thing look? Um, are you or swinging at the swarm or the... Yeah, the swarm, yeah. Um, it's definitely dropped. you have taken out a lot of birds so far. Um, uh, it's starting to shrink. Maybe half-ish, almost half the birds have been taken out at this point. Okay, um, I want to put... I haven't done this before, so I'm going to totally do it wrong. I want to put one level one of, uh, Divine Smite into it. Which is supposed to do 2d8 damage. So, okay. 21 damage to it, plus, um, I, if someone else can tell me, I, I think that the divine smack damage doubles as well for crit. Is that right? It does. Um, so, 
Do you want me to roll to gain a double or just roll 48? Uh, 48. Um, so an extra 26 damage. Uh, okay. So what does that look like as you just take out all of them? Uh, um, I, I think it's just like, I don't know, you see kind of like Ball does just like a, a giant slash. Um, and then as he slashes, like from his blade, there's this kind of glowing beam of light that comes, comes through. And in that moment where for, um, for Ezekiel and Cal, just like, it's just darkness and, you know, these, the sound of birds flying around, but it's just a bright light and then all the birds just in one moment hit the ground. Yeah. So your, your actual blade may have hit a few, a good number of them. But as you come down, that bright light almost extends the blade slashing down um, as all the birds kind of stop flying and fall to the ground all at the same time. And you actually notice the tree has a hefty slash through it. You can actually see where it's like starting to tip over um, where the tree itself has been slashed through. All of the birds lie dead on the ground. Their green eyes just flickering out. And did you um, want to stay there, Paul? I'm going to move down one just to get into the range of this guy, and then I'm going to use the bonus action to cast... Uh, Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't know. Am I allowed to do that? If I put a spell into the to Divine Smite, can I still cast a spell with my bonus action? I don't think Divine is... Yeah, Divine Smite is just a thing you can add. Oh, okay. All right. It doesn't okay. take an action. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so you do step down. The Shield of Faith uh, enshrouds you as you move in between these two Valorant. And that will bring us up to this one. Who had a bite into Amson's cat, so I'm going to continue to chase him. Running forward, and Amson. First one down is going to go. That is a 10 to hit. No, that does not hit. Uh, for the, the second, second one, one, I'm going to add cutting words. Okay. Um, so that takes two. Of that reduces it... the attack to, uh, by five. So 20 to hit. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> So it, uh, yeah, so the, it tries to pin you with the horns into your back, um, and you quickly turn and kind of, like dancing around a bull, it comes to the side, it turns around, um, goes to bite up towards you. You try to cut in words to distract it, but the f- green curiosity in its eyes are too much as it does get its bite into your collarbone, doing nine piercing damage as it bites in, drawing blood, hitting down. And that will bring us up to this one, who's going to run up, sprinting towards you, ball. Number one, great. Uh, Twelve, did it. Both miss. With horn and bite, it tries to slam into you and rake its balls across you, unable to pierce through the armor. And that will bring us up to you, Calvin. You were once blinded by birds, no more. What would you like to do? I am going to try to smack this one with my uh, spear, or just shove my spear into it. We'll see how this goes. It doesn't. It doesn't go at all. I rolled the nine total. Okay, yeah, you you launch it towards it, um, but it's too focused on Amps, and it's partially uh, kind of in Amps in space at this point, dropping to the ground as the spear goes right over its back. Uh, you um, have a one D. It's not enough. So even with the blessing, oh the yeah, thrilling around you, it's not quite enough. Uh, you kind of scrape the spine. Not enough to pierce through the hide. Cool. Um. Well, I can't leave, and I don't want to go around. So I'm I'm set. Okay. So you stay there, facing off against this one as this other orange one you can go towards the one right in front of him. Ball. Uh, sixteen to hit ball. Ah, uh, that is a negative. Okay, and a 20 to hit. 20? Uh, yeah, that hits. Okay. So the first raking across with the scro- uh, claws don't quite break through, but the horns do. 12 piercing damage as it slams its horns into your gut. Not quite lifting your heavy half time form off the air, but does uh, send you reeling as it withdraws blood dripping off of its horns. And that will bring us up to Ezekiel, no longer blinded by the birds. You see Ball to the south with three Valon around them and Calvin to the north on the other side of the tree, one more Valon. Alright, so I'm going to run, kind of dance around the fire to get here. And then after clarifying the rules, I'm going to go ahead and bonus action and go Brown Bear. 
was actually bigger than that, but I don't know how to fix it. And then I am gonna try and do two claws at the, the, the thing right in front of me. So that is, yeah, 19 to hit, and... Yeah, that will hit. Nine. Uh, the nine will not, but the first claw, um, as Ezekiel, you run, and I assume as you're leaping over the fire, you <laughs> yep. land into this mess. Brown okay. bear, um, to go and support ball, and then so I'll, with that first one, I'll slash, and then I'll also pump a first level smite into it. So that's eight slashing and four radiant. Okay, and that first, uh, claw just slashes across. It's almost a surprise to see another figure as big as Ball suddenly slash into it, almost knocks it to the ground. The second strike uh, comes up, but it's already back on its feet. Ducks just under the second strike. And is that you, all for you? Yes, but I uh, deleted my token of myself, and that made me no longer able to see as I realized it. <laughs> <laughs> I will fix that as Ellery. Um, it is your turn. Okay, so... I don't like how many of these while run around ball. I'm going to move down around Ezekiel, and I think I can get to here, below Ezekiel a little bit. And from there, I am going to cast Scorching Ray. One ray at each of the three while that I can see. Okay. That's dangerous. The first two are going to be no problem to, to see. The third one from that position is going to have some cover, but you can certainly... Stop. I can ignore three quarters of cover. Let's see. Do that. And don't forget to add a d4 on all attacks. Okay. If you were one over to the left, you would be able to see him enough to ignore the cover. He essentially has full cover at this point. Um, I'm not sure from where I started if I have enough movement to get one more over. Uh, where were you next to Vesper? I was right below and to the side of Vesper, between Vesper and the campfire. Uh, that's Yeah, that's as far as you can go. Um, so you wouldn't be able to hit that, that last one, but you could throw it towards one of the other two. Okay, so then um, which, which of the two that I can hit seems to be the worse off? The one that just got slashed by the brown bear looks, looks much worse than the other. Okay, so I'm going to send two towards that one and one towards the other. Um, nine's not going to hit. Um, it was the first scorching ray kind of flies off, briefly lighting up the area. Eighteen. That old slam. And a natural one. Okay, the last one. Uh, roll a... I think I have tides. From days ago, but I haven't used it. I think or whatever it, it's called, where I can it resets after a long rest. Never mind. I thought. Never mind. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage on the one. Yeah. Um, so two just <laughs> across the sky. You're trying to not hit ball and hit them. One hits the ground. One flies over. The second one actually slams into the wounded one. Healing. The wrong dice. Uh, eight. And as the flames slam into it, it burns off what remains of the fur. And you can start to see a bit of skull that is pressed and grown through, um, strangely, unnaturally, uh, at the skull area that the rest of the fur just burn off skin, revealing these uh, dark burns beneath. And did you want to stay there, Ellie? Or that's all your movement? That's your action? Um, yep. Yeah, and no surge, just barely. Okay. And you feel the, again, the tickle of energy running up your spine towards the back of your neck. You push it back down. And that will bring us up to Vesper. Okay, okay. Um, so I'm going to bonus action move the spiritual weapon next to this blue guy and take a swing. Oh, thank God for spiritual weapon or for bless. Uh, that's going to be 15 to hit. That will hit. Awesome. As the big mace flies down, <laughs> cracking on its back as it's facing ball. Okay. Not a whole ton. Uh, for seven force damage. He so slams into it. You hear a crack. Probably broke a few ribs as you slam into the back with that. And then I'm going to toll the dead on the red one next to uh, Amson. Okay, and is that a con save? That is a wisdom save. Wisdom save. 16. Yeah. 
Unless you know, he goes off, but it's just undistracted going between the Anson and the Calvin. And then I'm going to come run up here and make myself a target for this one so they're not all on ball. Gotcha, moving up. And that will bring us up to actually the one right there. And as it slams in, it looks to the side uh, towards the mason. As it does, it sees you and is going to strike. That is a 22 to hit. Uh huh. Uh, that is six some damage. With a okay. It jabs you with the horns. And as it tries to rake towards you with the mouth, it just gets a full mouthful of your arm and isn't able to cut through. Um, as it withdraws, some of its corrupted teeth just fall out. One or two still stuck in your armor. And that will bring us up to Anson. Alright, because I look terrible, I'm going to do a second level healing word on myself as a bonus action. It's pretty good. That is nine points of healing. Alright. And then I'm going to use my action to attack with my rapier. I'm going to attack the falling. That is an eight, so that doesn't hit. Okay, just frantically uh, worrying about the wound on your neck. Um, it heals up some and you strike out uh, with the rapier. And it actually hits and the rapier metal bends against the hide. And because I don't want to risk moving, I'm going to stay there. Okay, staying there, that will bring us up to the swarm, which is gone and two ball with three balls around you, and now a bear. All right, I'm going to take two hits at the bear. Um, no, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of see kind of the, uh, just kind of take a moment to lick my wounds, and I'm going to um, put nine points of lay on hands into me. And uh, ready my glaive for the next round. Okay. Yeah, as you put your hands on, some of the wounds begin to heal up, stop bleeding. And that will bring us up to the one in front of Amson. Um, and as you struck out it again, it has turned its attention back towards you. That is a. The first one is a 13, the second one is a 16. Uh, 16 hits. Okay, so the first one's you quickly kind of turn against the tree as it kind of scrapes some of the bark away, then jumps up um, with its bite, doing 13 damage. Real high on the damage over there as it launches into you, just finding some of that, that wound where you're holding and grabs onto your arm, ripping some of the flesh off, and the blood starts pouring again. And that will bring us up to this one down here. The green one by Ball is going to go for you, Ball, again. 13 to hit, and a 20, 30, 20 to hit. Does that hit ball? No, so I'm going to use, I'm going to, just as he's about to hit me, um, since I'm readying my blade, uh, you just kind of see his bites just kind of hit some yellow glowing light, and it's deflected off. Okay, once again, just as it gets close to pierce through the armor, there's a sudden burst of energy that pushes it back off, and that will bring us up to Calvin. I'm going to try to poke at the, the Valor in front of me again, because we're good friends, and I don't think he's talked to me in a while. He can send me a direct message. That's a 22 to hit. That definitely hits. I'm going to throw in a smite on this. Okay. Energy flows down the shaft of the spear as you strike into its side where it's long are. I don't... Can I reverse that? I rolled two ones and a two, so that's a total of ten... Piercing. Okay. <laughs> as you strike in, you still hit with the lungs on, and as you withdraw, you see the bubbles coming out of the blood, confirming that you didn't hit, uh, did indeed hit the lungs. The smite energy burning off uh, some of the blood, almost boiling upon contact. There's a strange interaction between the divine energy and whatever monstrous corrupted energy lies within the blood. Is that all for you, Calvin? Um, I'm going to go ahead and move around to the other side so that I'm kind of there in between, like, you know, and that's fine. And then yeah. I'll call it a day. Okay, so you shift it around, moving next to Amson, and that will bring us up to this one that just got clawed by the bear, and it's actually between the terms of the bear. 12 to hit. That hits. Okay, well, does not have a great AC. So nine piercing damage on the horns into the chest of the bear, the meaty bear, and it locks its mouth around the neck of the bear, doing five piercing damage. So nine and five? Nine and five. 
Good. I got two con saves. Uh, I might be able to pass that one with one, two, four. Nope, bless is gone. <sighs> so close to the wind surrounding Calvin, Vesper, um, Ezekiel's bear, and Aelric suddenly whew, stops. And that will bring us up to you, Ezekiel, um, in this bear's war. <laughs> I'm not super happy about that, but I'm going to try and claw him again. I'm going to have to fix the thing to get rid of that. And this one in 15. front of you is looking pretty rough. That will hit. So 13 slashing damage. Okay. So as you... It's half slashing along the claws and half just slamming the creature into the ground. Every creature with a thud falls to the ground and doesn't move. All right, and then I'll just take a step forward and claw the other one. All right. Ten, so probably not. Okay, so you take a step forward, putting your heavy paw upon the dead creature in front. Clawing forth, and it just quickly moves, shifts to the side, as you rake along some of the grass, the withered grass, the vesper, that inflicted wounds upon, just missing there. Uh, and that's my turn. That will bring us up to Ellery. Okay, so is Ezekiel in my way enough that I can't hit the one that he's next to? Yeah, you would have to move over. That okay, would be so one to be able to... With your sharpshooter, you only have to move over one, but you would need to move over one. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to cast a uh, Firebolt. Okay, so... Seeing flames across... That's 23. That will definitely hit, slamming into it, just as it ducks under the bear's claw. And 10 damage. The flames roll over. It almost howls in pain. The whatever monstrous energy that makes it so aggressive and angry uh, briefly subsides for just a moment before kicking back in. Anything else for you, Ellery? And I'm going to stay there. Okay, that will bring us up to you, Vesper. Okay, Ball, how you looking? About like half. Okay, do you want me to boost you a little bit then? Whatever you think. Okay. Uh, then I will cure wounds at first level on Ball, which is utter garbage. You place your hand upon the uh, wound giant. Uh, uh, seven health back to you. Thank you. And then bonus action, I'm going to swing at the Ball Runner for spiritual weapon, which is a natural 20. Okay. So much better. Ooh, okay. Not bad. That is. 11 force damage. Okay, as we slam in this, slams in once again. This one's looking pretty rough at this point. It's not going to last much longer. But it remains standing. Anything else for you to whisper? That is it. Okay, and as you slam into this one, um, it turns towards you. Can I go attack you? Uh, that is a 9 and a 15. 15 will hit. Second strike. Goes out. Eleven piercing damage. Um, as it cracks down, it immediately almost leaps up from that low position, driving its ones into you, lifting you off into the air for just a minute. You come down on your feet. Okay. And that will bring us up to Amson. As you see, this Valorant is relentlessly coming towards you. Calvin has moved around, shifting, partially getting right next to you in between. It is up on you, Amson. I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on myself at first level this time. Uh, so that's five. Um, and he's going to use his action to disengage and move over here. Yeah, like that. Okay. So shifting backwards, almost using Calvin as cover. Um, it goes to strike forward, but isn't able to attack around Calvin and the tree. And as you strategically move back with the lantern there. Anything else for you? Uh, no, that's all. That will bring us to Ball. Alright, um, I'm going to take a swing at um, the blue one uh, for a 24. That will definitely be. For 9 slash. It is just barely up as you bring the great sword down, <laughs> clawing into it. Um, you can see a huge chunk of meat is carved off of its shoulders and it limps down to the side, but doesn't give up quite yet. All right, so I'll give a, a nod to Vesper, kind of in recognition of the healing, and just prepare for the next uh, fight. And that will bring us up to the one front of Calvin. As Anson has moved away, it turns its gaze towards you. Uh, that is a 10 to hit, and a 16 to hit. 
Nope. Okay, so both it just strikes for you. Use your shield um, in combination with your spear to just push it back and keep it off when you keep it at bay. And bring this up to this heavily wounded one that's been clawed by the bear and flamed by Ellery. So go for the bear one more time. Eight to hit. And eight misses. Eight misses. So it strikes forth to the bear and you just push your claw up and push it back down to the ground. Um, and then it does a 14 to hit. Yeah. Uh, nine uh, slashing damage. Um, as okay. it leaps up, clawing into the already uh, wound on your neck. And that will bring us up to Calvin. Hey, I'm going to try, try to poke this bear. Thingy. Okay, you've kept Whatever. it at bay with your shield as you go for a strike. Uh, that's a 13. So. Just barely miss. Which is still a miss, so I'm going to wave my spear in front of it and say, Shoo! Mad dog! Mad dog! It looks briefly confused. And are you going to stay there, Galvin? For giggles, can I try to shove it away? Uh, yeah, as long as I can, sure. You can either shove it back by feet, or you can shove it to the ground. Prone. I I would love to shove it to the ground. Yeah, you can do that. So that's athletics, I believe, versus it's... Well, that's the wrong die, but whatever. Uh, that, that is a 24. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, as you just slam it with the shield, you knock it to the ground. You do miss, but with, you quickly uh, parry with your shield, slamming it onto its side on the ground in front of you. Sit! I said sit! Uh, so it is currently prone. You would have uh, attacks at advantage if you're able to strike before it gets back up. That will bring us up to that one, which is dead, and to Ezekiel as the bear. Okay, I'm gonna claw at this creepy horned wolf thing. Nope, another 10, and a 19. The second one hits. Uh, so I'll do 10 slashing, and uh, four. Confirmation, I'll drop another first level smite into it. Okay. Eight radiant. So eight that, is, that is enough. So the first strike, these uh, claws are glowing in divine energy. So it rakes across, uh, slamming it, tumbling backwards a few feet before coming to rest on moving. Uh, and then I can't really get over to that one, so I'm going to start running up towards Cal. Uh, and I'll stick to that up. Okay, so the bear turns, begin moving up, and that will bring us up to you, Ellery. There is one by Calvin to the north, and then one heavily wounded between Ball, Vesper, and the rolling to diamonds. Okay, I can't really see the one up near Calvin very well, so I'm just going to send a firebolt at the one next to Ball. Eighteen. That of it. For two damage. That's enough. I almost said you, you would have to roll really low for it to not kill it, but you, you just enough. Um, as it slams the flames, as it tumbles back onto the slope, coming to rest, and you hear just the sounds of one more uh, pairing off with Calvin to the north. That will bring us up to Vesper. Um, since I didn't use my movement yet, I think I'm going to go ahead and move up closer to the one... Um, Basically, I'm going to go up to the fire, I think. Yeah, okay. So you begin moving up in that direction, and that will bring us up to this one. Okay, so bonus action, I'm going to move the spiritual weapon here and take a swing. That's a, that's a 15 to prone. hit. That will hit. Oh, it is prone, so let me... Just see it's, not. it's not. Um. So that would be not awesome. That's a 6 force damage. Okay, as it flies over, it's still on the ground. Slamming down into it. What else for you? Let me think. Uh, who else is is looking bad? Uh, I know Ball's wounded. I'm wounded. Amson's wounded. Anyone else? Is Calvin? How does Calvin? All. Okay, great. Then I am going to. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna make sure there's no um, like. Okay, yeah. So uh, then I will channel divinity, and I'm gonna give uh, Amson five points. I'm going to give, because um, I'm going to use the Preserve Life, I'm going to give Ball 10, and then I'll take 5. Right, as it's been, divine energy flows out towards you, healing some of the wounds. Are you going to stay there? Uh, yes. 
All right, that will bring us up to Amson. All right. Uh, boo, boo. I'm going to bonus action angle the, angle the bullseye lantern. Uh, and then I'm going to move over here. And then I'm going to use my action and ready an action to shoot my hand crossbow as soon as I can get a clear shot of the ball. Okay, if that so ever cool happens. Up. Crank it back, aiming in that general direction, ready if you get a second. That will bring us up to the ball. Okay, um, I will... No, not to just close myself in here. And just take a swing at it. Okay, moving up, and it's at advantage because Calvin pushed it to the ground. Excellent. I think with advantage, so we should probably really mess it up, right? And as you bring your, your blade up and come come down, you suddenly hear do, 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 do. look up and you see you're just slanting into the bowels above you. You're tall enough to just, and it slowed you down enough to where it comes down, the bow and easily kind of rolls to the side, shifting away. Alright, and I'll end my turn. That will bring us up to it. It gets to his feet and is going to go towards Calvin and knock him down. A ten and a natural one. As it gets to its feet, it's quickly just recklessly going for you, Calvin, but uh, pulling the shield up, you quickly just parry, block, shift, and uh, maneuver around it, keeping it at bay. And that one is dead, and that will bring us up to Calvin. It is currently at well, its feet, just going for you, the last one. Well, with my newfound knowledge, I would love to bash it down and then attack it, if that's possible. Go for it. Um, real athletics. Athletic. Mix isn't great. It's a 13. Enough. It rolled an 11. As it, uh, stru- you almost time it, waiting for it to leap into the air. And as it does, you quickly uh, almost side swap its leg, turning it sideways, slamming back on the ground as you pull up your weapon and go. Uh, well, that, that's a dirty 20. Yeah, dirty 20 is what we're going to go with. Yeah. Okay. As it comes downward into it. Dealing. Or six piercing damage. Okay, and as you down into it. It is looking very rough at this point. Um, it is still breathing, but not by much. As you do withdraw, the blood um, sprays out as you withdraw the spear, and that will bring us up to Ezekiel unless you want to move down. Not at all. Alright, Ezekiel. Alright, I'll just move forward so I'm with range. Uh, and it's still prone? It is still prone, yeah. Calvin is just kind of withdrawing its piercing. Okay, 12 and 21. The 21 what? 7 slash. How do you want to do this? So after Calvin just knocked it down and stabbed it, I'll just run up behind and kind of two bear claw down onto its face. Okay. Yeah, and as it's withdrawing, you just <laughs> slam into it. Um, and as you withdraw the massive bear claws, you can see a pierced slashed and clearly crushed under the weight of uh, your bare form, ruined form of a valorant. Clearly the lungs, ribs, rib cage, bones have been crushed, fractured. Um, as you pull off a couple seconds, go by a minute, goes by, it's quiet, you don't hear any more uh, animals or anything else launching from the woods. And as you begin to take in the scene and decide what to do next, we're going to take a quick uh, break here. Next time on Back to the Story. I am a follower of AI. I follow Simba. And you can see north. Now that you have time to really take it in, the cliffs begin to raise higher and higher, which is where Orcesis resides. If we send anyone down there, that's not going to be a second chance. As you are looking over there, you do notice the waves shift for a moment, like suddenly turn in a different direction. It passes, and it doesn't happen again. For part two of this episode of Back to the Story, you can find it on Stitcher, or by following us at back to underscore the story on Twitter.